In this video, we're going to continue the example of the harmonic oscillator in a constant electrostatic field. And we're going to calculate the second order correction to the energy for this system. So to remind you, we developed this formula, uh, this general formula for the second order, uh, order energy correction to a non-degenerate state. So this is a sum from every other state except the one we're considering of the square modulus of this matrix element over the difference of all the energies uh, to the energy of the, system, of the state we're considering. This matrix element was uh, denoted by this bracket. And uh, so it's uh, this delta H hat was our perturbation Hamiltonian, which was given in this particular example by this in terms of the creation and annihilation operators. So we'll begin by calculating this quantity first and then uh, plugging into this formula and doing the sum. Or we'll see that we won't need to do the sum in this case. So the square modulus of this matrix element is Calculate it as so. Once again, we can take out all the constants. Uh, being careful to take the square modulus of them. So the square root goes away and each one of these picks up a square. And the negative sign goes away. And We're left with the square modulus of this expression. By the usual rules of the creation and annihilation operators, uh, this will simplify to n plus one. We again have the Kronecker delta of k and n plus one from the creation operator because we're eventually going to sum over all states except for n. So we need to take care to take into account the case when k is equal to n plus one. And then this, the annihilation term results in this n times Gronker delta of k n minus one. So we can plug this back into our formula for the second order correction. Mm -hmm. So we again have these constants from up here that we take out from the sum. We're going to, again, break it up into two sums for each one of these two terms. So that's this sum is for this term over here. And for all k except n. Just as we had for the first order correction to the state, this Kronecker delta will collapse the sum to a single term or uh, if you want, it kills every term except when k is equal to n plus one here and when k is equal to n minus one over here. Uh, 
And uh, so this k should be replaced by n plus one. And then if you take the difference of these two uh, energy states, you again end up with h bar omega naught. This k over here should be replaced with n minus one. When you take the energy difference, uh, you end up with minus h bar omega naught. So our second order correction to the energy after some simplification will be given by this expression. So what this means, because our first order uh, correction was zero, was uh, so in general, you have something like this plus higher order terms. This term was zero. This is uh, h bar omega naught times n plus one half. This will result in uh, where this uh, you can substitute in this factor into this. So this will be uh, our expression for the energy of our harmonic oscillator up until second order. So with that, we've uh, used all of the quantities that we uh, developed, the first order correction to the energy, second order correction to the energy, and first order correction to the state. Uh, for this case of a quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator. It turns out that this problem is actually uh, analytically solvable. The case of a harmonic oscillator in a constant electrostatic field. Uh, if you perform the following change of variables, you should be able to solve for the energies analytically. So what you can try is to solve the time independent Schrodinger equation using this change of variables and show that uh, our results from perturbation theory match the exact solution. And with that, one way of interpreting that is uh, to try to think about what that says about higher order corrections to the energy. If our calculations to second order match the exact expression, uh, what do you think the higher order corrections to the energy will be? Finally, in the last video, we'll go through, uh, or through, in the next video, we'll go through the uh, the conditions under which this perturbation series expansion is valid. Uh, obviously, it's valid when your perturbation is small with respect to your original uh, energy scale, but as we'll see, it, that's not sufficient. It also has to be smaller than the differences of uh, the energy levels.